Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to another film. And this morning, you join me in the Thames Valley in Berkshire, uh, where I'm off to photograph um, one of the most beautiful plants uh, of spring. Uh, and it's the snake's head fritillary. Now, this is a plant of ancient water meadows, and it was once very, very common uh, in the UK uh, before the Second World War. Um, but since that time, um, a lot of those traditional old floodplains and water meadows were ploughed up for food production. Uh, and that's meant that this plant is a lot rarer than it used to be. But there are various spots along the Thames Valley where uh, it, uh, it flourishes still. Uh, and I'm off to, uh, to one of those places. Uh, now last year I came here and I had the most amazing morning. Uh, it was one of those late frosts. I, sorry, I can hear a green woodpecker yaffling away in the background. Um, it, we had one of those late spring frosts and very bright mornings, and these plants were freshly emerged. They were covered in almost like this hoar frost, these ice crystals, which then proceeded to melt as the sun came up. It was, it was the most magical morning, and I remember running around and and uh, getting a bit flustered because I knew these conditions wouldn't last and I needed to look for decent compositions and I think we've all been there. Uh, anyway, I've got some amazing pictures and I'll, I'll put a couple of those up for you now. This morning is very, very different uh, in terms of the conditions. It's overcast, um, it's quite mild. Um, I was hoping for a bit of drizzle to give a, you know, perhaps a, a few sort of nice water droplets on the plants themselves, but I mean, perfect conditions, it's very still. Um, so perfect conditions for, for photographing the detail of the plants. So the kit that I've got with me this morning uh, is the 105 Macro, the 24 to 70, uh, and the 200 to 500 uh, with the D850. Uh, and uh, for those of you that saw my snowdrop video, uh, will know that those are the lenses that I use for that one. And I'll put a link to that video up in the, up in the top of the screen here. So this is a plant that comes in two color forms, uh, well here anyway, there's like a purple and then a white. And this particular field, there's actually quite a lot of, of white flowers, mainly it's the purple that predominate, but I can see that there's quite a few in flower now. Um, so let's see how we get on. Now, as you can see, that there, you know, there are definitely two distinct colour forms. Um, you'll see the white and the, and the sort of purple flowers. Uh, they're not as advanced as I thought they might be actually at this stage, um, and there aren't as many as I remember last year. So uh, maybe I'm a tad earlier uh, than I was last year, or. You know, springs are, are, are different anyway, and uh, things emerge at different rates. But anyway, what we have got, um, because it's a water meadow, is some nice uh, moisture, which is leading to a lot of sort of dew on the flowers themselves and the grass. You can you can probably tell uh, from the shot. So, um, because the light isn't going to be as dramatic, and the conditions aren't as dramatic as last year, um, I'm going to have a little bit more time to pick the right plant. Um, and this is where the 200 to 500 really comes in handy because what you don't want to be doing is lying down amongst these um, amongst these plants and crushing things around you. Um, so working on the edges of the field and picking out individual plants, you know, sort of 500 mil, um, because the, plow the flowers are quite big, um, that lens allows you to do that. Also allows you to get lots of sort of separation in terms of very shallow depth of field at that sort of focal length at that sort of f5.6. Um, so that's sort of what I'm looking for. I can shove loads of um, grass in the foreground as well to create sort of out of focus elements. So those are the sorts of shots that I'm going to be looking for this morning. Um, and uh, well, let's see if we can pick a nice plant and, uh, and uh, get on with it. Now 
I know that the choice of this lens is going to surprise a few of you for flower photography, but it's one of my absolute favourites, particularly when you've got sort of larger plants where you can uh, be a little further away. Um, what it does do is it creates that beautiful separation uh, between subject and background, particularly, I can't stress the importance of actually, um, I can't stress enough the importance of getting really low, uh, which is why I'm lying on the ground. And that's the other advantage actually of the longer lens, it means I get, there's like a little path that runs along this field edge, um, and I'm not crushing any of the plants uh, by lying here. If I were lying in the middle of the field, then I'd be lying on other, on other flowers or other emerging spikes that I can't see amongst the grass. So that's important. And um, this lens allows me you know, to pick out plants that are you know, 15 feet away um, and isolate them nicely. I can put loads of this sort of grass, out of focus grass in front of the lens and create some nice sort of soft ethereal feels in, in the foreground elements. Um, so it's actually <laughs> probably my favourite lens for photographing plants. I, did, I experimented it a lot with it last year um, and got some quite nice results. So have a, you know, if, you, if you've got a lens like this that you use for bird photography, let's say, then, then give it a go for plants. Honestly, you'll be surprised if you haven't tried it. Um, it's, it's really worthwhile. But the importance is, is getting low, um, low down to your subject, creating that separation, um, and create a nice soft dreamy feel. That's what I'm looking for anyway in my photography. And actually these plants have got a nice bit of dew on them this morning so um, although I haven't got those dramatic lighting conditions that I had last year, hopefully you know, we'll, we'll, have something, we'll have something a little different, um, you know, a softer feel to the images. Um, we'll see how we get on. So I think that's me done for the morning and I love these plants. I just think I'm a little early but um, they're in, you know, there's plenty of them here, they're in various stages of emergence, so you've got the sort of nice teardrop shape before the plant opens up, fully opens up into that sort of bell, um, that, t that sort of classic bell-shaped flower um, that they have. Um, so I've, I've sort of captured, you know, the white ones and the purple ones and all sorts of different angles and there's a nice lot of dew this morning, so and it's some really flat light, so completely different conditions to last year. Um, but we'll see what uh, you know. We'll see what they look like when we get back uh, to the uh, to the computer. Um, and all I've used this morning is is this. Um, I just felt that getting too close to the macro was going to crush um, plants around them, and I didn't want to do that. So that's the beauty of this lens, um, as well as sort of creating those nice sort of soft backgrounds and uh, and the sort of arty feel that I like. Um, you know, your style of photography might be completely different, but you know, please, if you do come and photograph these plants um, or any plants come to that, you know, be very, very careful. As I said, you know, low angle is is fantastic, but that does mean lying on the ground um, and potentially crushing other things. So just just be very careful. Uh, you know, when you do it, and you know, so that's the advantage of a long lens um, is I can lie on this sort of um, this footpath down the side of the field and, uh, and you know, not be in danger of doing that so um, anyway this is only part of the film because tomorrow um, there's a uh, I want to photograph another plant which flowers early in the spring uh, and it's uh, another rarity actually um, and it's, it's another beautiful plant but it's the first orchid uh, of the year to flower uh, it's the called the early spider orchid and you found that you find that uh, on the uh, Dorset coast so I'm off to Dorset tomorrow morning, uh, bright and early, uh, and I'm going to have Sky with me um, this time. So we'll, we'll see what uh, see what happens there, and we'll catch up, you know, in the second part of this film. Good morning again everybody. Um, yesterday I was in the Thames Valley uh, looking for uh, the fritillaries and uh, photographing the snakes head fritillaries in the, in the water meadows of the Thames Valley. Uh, this morning you joined me uh, on the south coast of Dorset. 
where I'm looking for another early spring flowering plant, another beautiful species called the early spider orchid. So we go from snakes to spiders. Um, now the uh, early spider orchid is um, the earliest flowering species of orchid in the UK. Um, it's, pri well, it's primarily found in the Mediterranean uh, and really the south coast of England is the most northerly point uh, of its distribution. Um, so it's quite a rare plant in the UK. Uh, now this is a location I've been to numerous times before but not for a few years so it'll be interesting to see uh, you know how those plants are, are getting on now. Be interesting to see them again. I'm reliably informed they're in flower by uh, Twitter. <laughs> it's a great source of information so uh, I'll see you down there see how we get on. Well it turns out that people were right they are in flower. Um, it's the very early stages so most of them are quite small at the moment and um, really probably only one flower out where normally they've got maybe a couple so I'm gonna have to look around for you know a decent specimen to photograph but they're all over they're, as I remember them um, and they love these sort of south facing uh, grassy slopes these grazed slopes that's really important to um, you know f for them to have grazed uh, chalk grassland is what they is what they thrive on uh, and when you put your hand to the soil it's really quite warm even though it's you know I guess half past nine quarter, ten o'clock in the morning um, and it's overcast as you can see um, there was a, a mist and a fog this morning uh, as I was driving in um, and there's still sort of fog lingering over the higher points because it's quite uh, it's quite a hilly uh, landscape here it's quite undulating uh, I love it I think it's you know this is the Jurassic coast is just is fabulous uh, so Sky is busy investigating uh, all the grassland uh, and having a nice time running around. So um, I'm going to show you one of these plants. They're quite small. I mean, they're, you know, this sort of size. So, you know, they're very, very small orchid. I mean, in the Mediterranean, they grow much larger, um, I guess, because it's warmer. Um, as I said, this is the sort of northernmost, uh, you know, this northernmost of their range, you know, on the south coast of England here. Uh, so, you know, they are a, a, a warmth-loving species. I mean, who knows with climate change, that'll, that will probably change. But, um, no, it's a lovely species. And I'll try and pick out uh, an example for you and get the camera close before I get set up. The good thing about this is that, um, you know, unlike the fritillaries yesterday, they're a bit more spaced out. Uh, the other plants are quite easy to see in the short grass, so it's a bit easier for me to um, make sure that I'm not treading on anything and crushing you know, any other plants. So uh, yeah, again, this is going to be low angle photography, so I'm going to be on the ground a lot of the time. Uh, and probably this is more macro than the 200 to 500 because of the size of the plants, and because I can't get close enough unless I want to put something in its environment. Uh, which I might try and do. So uh, let's experiment and uh, you know we've got a few hours so let's see what's possible and the good thing about this morning is the critical thing about the weather this morning is that there is no wind. It's really really still and there's still dew being uh, held trapped in the grass so I'm hoping that you know that might add a bit of atmosphere to uh, to the images as well so uh, yeah let's get on and see what we can what we can take. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see um, that. That's the orchid and I'll try and give you some perspective. Here's my hand so that shows you how small this plant um, is and how delicate it is. So far I've been using the macro lens um, but I'm not getting anything which is really inspiring me sort of artistically, um, the sort of more I guess uh, ID portraits. Um, I just can't get far enough away, I just can't get enough foreground interest, um, out of focus foreground elements uh, in front of the plant to try and create that sort of feel that I like and you'll have all, all recognised by now. Um, so what I thought I'd do is get the 200 to 500 out. Um, and just see if I can create something a little bit different with that. So, yeah, let's give it a go. There's quite a few people around, which is why I keep looking around, <laughs> sort of 
looking at this idiot talking to himself, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's put that lens on and, uh, and see what a difference that makes. The, the light is very, very bright. You can see me, I'm, I'm you know, beginning to squint now, uh, which means I can use handheld 100 ISO easily at the sort of apertures that I'm using and getting 400, 800, uh, 800th of a second shutter speed, which is, which is great, so I can handhold no fear of camera shake. So um, yeah, let's give the longer lens a go. So this is very much as I remember it, and I'm having to be very, very careful where I put my feet and I sit, and I'm trying not to pick too many plants to photograph because of that and cause as little damage as I can. I mean, every footstep causes damage. That's the reality of it. So you just got to be careful. Um, but I just thought I'd show you something. Um, because I switched to the long lens, I'm actually getting some much better results now in terms of uh, um, the artistic feel that I like. Uh, the macro lens is, as I said, it's great for portraiture. Um, being, you know, 105, it's probably not quite long enough, you know, in terms of focal length and there's not enough real estate because it's got quite a small area of glass in the front. Um, whereas the 2 to 500, much bigger area of glass at the front, uh, much more real estate, much more scope for me to put uh, objects in front of the lens to try and create that sort of out of focus feel. Uh, the problem with it is, of course, is the minimum focusing disc distance. Uh, get my words out. Uh, and you know I have to be a lot further back from the subject but it does give me the opportunity to put more things in front of the lens so I just thought I'd show you something quickly with the with the camera I'm gonna have to flip the screen around so I can actually see but um, I'll show you basically uh, the, the setup that I've got so the camera as you can see is is on the ground literally on the ground I said I've got to be very very careful and if I take you through the scene you probably see in the, in the middle there there's just a little clump of grass uh, and it's higher than the rest of the uh, sorry somebody rolling down the hill <laughs> um, in the distance uh, distracted me sorry uh, as you can see there's that area of uh, there's a clump of uh, longer grass and actually I can shoot through that um, that all being out of focus and I can focus on the plant in the distance uh, and I'll show you that now. I'll, I'll do my very, very best. Got to be very careful where I tread. Right. It's very, very difficult for me to see uh, because it's so bright and I'm finding it difficult to see the screen. But anyway, there's that clump of grass uh, and I'll move forward a little bit and I'll show you the plant that I'm photographing. Um, so that's the orchid that I'm photographing and I'm photographing it through that, that clump of grass. Um, and I'll put that image on for you now to show you the effect that that has. So I think that's it, that's me done. Um, you know, it's getting pretty bright now, it's about midday. I mean, there's a bit of mist that keeps rolling in off the sea, uh, but uh, it's, it's a bit too harsh now for me to work. Plus it's getting pretty busy and, uh, and I like my own company quite a lot when I'm out photographing. So, uh, uh, and to top it all, Sky's gone a bit lame. So I, I really ought to get her back to the car and, and get her home. But uh, we've had a lovely morning. Um, well, a lovely couple of mornings actually. Yesterday with the snake's head fritillaries and this morning with the early spider orchids. There's still plenty of, of flowers to come. Um, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty, a lot of them are pretty stunted. So. Uh, you know, they're, they're still growing and I think they'll be here for two or three weeks to come yet. Um, so it seems that sort of cold snap we've had has, has held them back a bit, but now the soil's really warm. Um, so that'll bring them on. Um, anyway, so that's my tale of snakes and spiders. Um, so I hope you've picked up a few hints and tips on, uh, on the way I go about photographing flowers artistically. Um, you know, there's always so much to do. I mean, you know, have we had backlit dew, there'd be bokeh and all sorts of things uh, going on, but uh, we, we didn't get that today. Um, 
But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave comments about the images below because I always like to hear what you've got to, got to say about those. Um, hit the bell icon for notifications of new videos and of course give us a thumbs up because all those things help the jolly old YouTube algorithm find us and broadcast us to more people so we can make more of this sort of stuff. So I anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, bye for now and we'll see you next time.